Good morning to all of you, and welcome to our service of morning prayer here at St. Luke's. For those of you who have your service leaflet already, you can follow along the service with it. And if you do not have your service leaflet, now is the appropriate time for you to hit the pause button and go to www.stlukesgranville.org to get that service leaflet. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our invitatory canticle for today is Christ our Passover, and we will say this together. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he dies, he dies to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia.
The first lesson is from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live. So they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we will say together Canticle 20, Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The second lesson is from 1 Peter. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God, he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Canticle 21, You Are God. As we say together, You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of eight apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Those who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. This past Tuesday, I spent about an hour on a Zoom video conference with the Bishop of Southern Ohio, along with members of his staff and several priests from our diocese. And we talked about all kinds of things. We talked about the possibility of reopening our churches, things we had to consider before doing so, what our liturgies might look like, and how long this, this current period of discomfort was likely to last. And several priests spoke about the difficulty of leading worship via video camera, some by iPhone, cut off from the people who were worshiping from home. More than one talked about the pain their people were feeling being cut off from one another, including one priest who spoke of a parishioner who was suffering from a terminal illness and how painful it was for her to be kept away from her church community during some of the last days of her life. And it was very clear to me in all of these conversations that this pandemic has taken a toll on all of us. Not just individually, but collectively, as the church. After two months of this, people are tired. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually tired. And then one of the priests from the Cincinnati area by the name of Tom Fair, 
he spoke up. Some of you might even remember Tom. I'm told that he served here at St. Luke's as curate several years ago. Now he's currently one of, he's currently the priest of one of our smaller churches in Cincinnati. And he also serves as chaplain to the community of the Transfiguration, our Episcopal convent near Cincinnati. And as such, Tom fulfills the priestly duties for the nuns at the convent and has an intimate view into the lives of the sisters and the intentional community in which they live. He said that one of the most difficult periods for women who have become novices at the convent it occurs at about two months after they begin their novitiate. By that time, after two months, the novelty of living such a cloistered life has somewhat worn off. And they become reminded that they are not yet nuns. They are not yet full sisters and won't be so for over another year. And they also become reminded of all of those things from their former lives that have been left behind. Tom said that that two-month mark is very difficult. The novices are stuck in that uncomfortable place between two worlds. The one they have left behind and the one that is not yet fully theirs. And you know, it is a hard thing to be stuck in between two worlds. You can't go back to the life you knew, and you can't quite live into the life yet to come. It is that uncomfortable place of transition from what is familiar into that which is unknown. It is that in-between time that we all hate. And after two months, that is exactly where we are all at, folks. Now, I'll admit that I didn't really mind pandemic life too much at the very beginning. The news from the outside world was disturbing, and I took it very seriously. But I was doing just fine at home with my family and my trusty coffee maker. At first, I found myself highly engaged in the initial work of creating this, this kind of virtual church so that we could maintain our community of faith. But then as time goes on, the novelty wears off. And then I found myself leading worship from my dining room table. And then my wife got called back to work at her office in Columbus. And I began to long to see the people of St. Luke's again at our Sunday worship. I suspect that many of you have very similar feelings as well. We are all stuck. We're stuck in that uncomfortable and uncertain in-between time. We can't go back to life we knew, and we can't really live into the life that is yet to come. And if ever there were a gospel account for the in-between times, it would have to be this one, because that is exactly where the disciples find themselves. Now, this gospel reading takes place in the time just after the resurrection. And Jesus has just told the disciples that he is going to be leaving them very shortly to return to the Father. And understandably, the disciples are absolutely freaking out. So much for their post-resurrection hopes and dreams. Clearly, they, they aren't going to go back to how things were, and they are terrified about what their life is going to look like after Jesus is gone from them. But look at the words of Jesus in this account. 
Jesus says, look, I am not going to leave you all alone. The Spirit, the Advocate, is coming to be with you. And even though I might not be in this world anymore, I will always be with you through the Spirit. So keep doing all of those things I have taught you. Keep my commandments. And I promise that everything is going to be just fine. And you know, I'm reminded that the disciples did move past that uncomfortable in-between time. The book of Acts and church history bear witness that they were far more than just fine. Even after Jesus was no longer physically there with them. And they faced pressures that none of us are likely to ever face. They had to build the church from absolutely nothing. Forget about a virtual church. They had to build the real church. Their earliest leaders were a mishmash of, of common day laborers without any seminary training. They faced persecution on all sides. They didn't even have a completed New Testament. And yet the early church did more than simply survive. They actually thrived. The earliest Christians preached the gospel of Jesus Christ and it spread across Asia Minor like a wildfire. They got past that in-between time and lived into the fullness of Christian witness. And why? Because they had the Spirit and they followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we need to be reminded of that. Because right now I think we all need a guide through this, this in-between time. We miss our old lives so much and we're all just a little bit scared of what is yet to come. And rightfully so. So how are we ever supposed to thrive as the body of Christ in the midst of all of the uncertainty? when we can't even sit next to one another? Well, maybe the answer has nothing to do with looking backward to what was, or even forward to what is yet to come. Maybe, maybe the answer has to do with living into this present uncomfortable moment with the expectation that the Holy Spirit is among us, and will lead us. Maybe we just need to open ourselves to the Spirit. Folks, the Holy Spirit is with us. The Holy Spirit is present. But there is no way for us to follow the Spirit's leading when we are all tied up in knots. No, we can't go back to what was. And no, we can't know for sure what is going to come. But right now, right now is what we have. And right now I am resting on Jesus' promise that his love still touches us through the indwelling of the Spirit. We are not alone in this world. And maybe, maybe all we need to do right now is stop and breathe and understand that no matter what is to come, we will not have to face it alone. Folks, we are at a unique point in our collective history. None of us have ever experienced anything like this. But we are not alone. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, I can promise you that you are not alone. We have not been left as orphans. The Holy Spirit is with us, and I am confident that there is a holy way 
through this in-between time. If the disciples could thrive without the physical presence of Jesus Christ, well, we can thrive as well. And we can thrive as a community of faith even when we are not physically together. We are tied together by our love and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So stop. Breathe. And know that you are not alone. And there is a way through this in-between time And you know, I can also tell you that we have an awful lot that the disciples didn't have. We have video cameras and computers and cell phones and liturgies and a New Testament. And by God, we have each other. I was reminded of that just a few hours after my Zoom meeting with diocesan leadership on Tuesday when I had another Zoom meeting, this time with our vestry. And St. Luke's is so blessed, blessed to have so many intelligent, creative, kind, loving, and giving leaders in this church. And I can promise you that our, that our church leadership is open to the leading of the Holy Spirit in the days and weeks to come. And we will come up with new ways of doing things better. We will continue to check in with all of you to see how you are doing. We will continue to support our ministry to those individuals who are most vulnerable. And we will continue to love during this in-between time because loving is always a hallmark of life in the Spirit. And one day, one day the church doors will be open once more. And we will once again be together as a community of faith. We will once again sing songs of praise. And we will once again receive the sacrament together. I pray that we don't ever take for granted all the gifts we have been given. And I pray that we will always, always follow the leading of the Holy Spirit through the good times, through the bad times, and even through the in-between times. The Spirit will always lead if we are willing to follow. So stop and breathe and know that you are loved beyond any understanding and know that we have not been left as orphans. We always have the Holy Spirit with us to comfort, to heal, to guide, and to get us through the next two months. Amen. Now let us say together the words of our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can exist in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpassed our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. From our parish prayer list, we remember Murphy Davis, Andy Reinhardt, Harriet Stone, Doug Bolden, Bill Holland, Sherry Holland, Ron Santoni, Pam Rayner, John Hurdle, Laura Hurdle, and Scott and family. We remember doctors, nurses, other first responders. We remember the poor, the lonely, those who are experiencing loss, and those who make decisions in difficult times. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who places solitary persons and families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech you, every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, and godliness. 
knit together in constant affection those who, in marriage, have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of parents to the children, and the hearts of children to the parents, and so enkindle fervent charity among us all, that we may evermore be kindly one to another, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us join together in saying the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Be careful as you go into God's creation, for it does not belong to you. Be gentle with yourself and with others, for we are the dwelling place of the Most High. Be alert and be silent, for God is a whisper. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May the God of hope fill us all with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.